Because I want to get the preliminary thoughts as well of Dr. Ishmael Yamsin. Well, thank you very much, and, uh, Beatrice and my colleagues. I, it's the first time I'm meeting uh, my distinguished lawyer face to face. I've listened to you a number of times on, on television. <clears throat> I'm very worried as a Ghanaian. <clears throat> I'm not a lawyer. Um, and I, I enjoy listening to legal arguments. But our constitution starts with, in the name of the Almighty God, we, the people of Ghana. Therefore, everything that we do, whether it is parliament, whether it's the executive, whether it is the judiciary, it must serve the best interest of the people of this country. Now, Mr. Poku made a point which I'm very much interested in. What is the end point? When you make all the arguments, and let us remember, we are at a point in time of our history where I have not seen such tension in this country before. You feel it right now? Oh, yes. Um, the two um, leading parties, <laughs> if I want to win, <laughs> Uh, one wants to win, one wants to retain. And there, there's very heightened tension in this country. And that is why I think that every action of every arm of government is done with great circumspect. The, the rush to parliament, the uh, sorry, the rush to the Supreme Court, the Supreme Court order, which, by the way, is ex parte. He eh? yes. went to court on ex parte basis, which may or may not allow the defendant the right to present his argument. That was wrong, in your opinion? Well, given the time we have in, is it right? That's my point, because that's what I'm saying we should be very circumspect, because... We have faced with many, many problems in this country. We have economic problems. We, last week you were discussing, was it last week you were discussing Galapse, which for me is existential. We have problems of, you know, hardship. And the least we want to do is to add to these problems. And let me, let me say this, that if Supreme Court, as my, the learned lawyer is saying, uh, if Parliament doesn't obey the Supreme Court, it commits an offense. <laughs> the, the, the Parliament can, or the Speaker can also cite Parliament for contempt, right? As in the wrong. Speaker can cite the Supreme yeah, Court for contempt. Right or wrong. Yes. And so we have this tango. We have six, seven ways to election. Why do we want to create such tension in this country? What is the necessity for it? So why is it that whatever the issues are, before running to court, could the party that is in court today not have done anything at all? Was it absolutely necessary to run to court for an order, which the speaker would definitely resist? And what if the speaker says, OK, fine. And I, I, I well, coming here, I just uh, looked at the reliefs or the reasons for the, for the, uh, for the grounds for the, the, what was sought in Parliament. The first one is the likely mischief being a halt to the business of Parliament. It's a likely mischief, not proven. Likelihood of the current minority members doing everything in their power to halt business of government and on and on. That, are we suggesting here that we can never have in this country a situation where the presidency doesn't have majority in parliament? The party of the presidency doesn't have majority in parliament, and that will amount to stopping government business. That's not true. It happens in many democracies. Therefore, even if that, is, that were be, to be true, is that is the best way to approach this? is to create a crisis of something that 
has not even materialized. So you're saying that the action of Apenyo marking in the first place is what is generating this exactly, tension we are experiencing? Exactly so. Because you just said that the, 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 the speaker has not declared the seat vacant yet. Yes. So why don't you wait? Now you go to, to go to the Supreme Court. The Supreme Court immediately says, gives an order, stop it for 10 days. I don't know, I haven't seen the Supreme Court order, but I don't know the reason the Supreme Court gave or whether they gave any reasons at all. But the 10 days, what will happen is exactly what Afeya Markin is seeking to avoid. Parliament won't work. Parliament will not work. So government business will come to a standstill in those 10 days. So what have we achieved then? So what I'm saying is that we should be mindful of the interest of the people of Ghana. We don't, the people of this country don't want crisis. The people of this country don't want tension. People of this country have had enough. And I think that the least we can do is to give them peace and stability. We are toying with the stability of this country. And I don't think it's the right thing to do. We're toying with the stability of this country, and you don't think that's the right no. thing to do. Those are your preliminary comments. But I want to come back to you, uh, Mr. Poku, because you said that uh, in, in the midst of all of that, we should see where this is leading us to. Is it leading us to a stable country, or it is going to destabilize us? And you just heard uh, Dr. Ishmael Yamsin there really talking about how many days we have to this Yes, election. And I, I, I wanted to, I wanted you to give us more of what you fear, really, going into this year's general election with what is happening now, by quoting what the national security, current national security minister said, Albert Kandapa. In, he said exactly on the 8th of April, 2022, that a biased judiciary poses a serious threat to national security as it erodes public trust in the justice system and emboldens lawlessness. You were talking about some fears earlier. With this in perspective, what do you foresee? Yes, while we are going through these challenges where we must be very much conscious of the security realities around us. Um, first of all, I always want to go back to what we have achieved in security terms. Historically, we are aware of, Ghana went, of what Ghana went through before the 1992 constitution. It's a long period of instability. And for once, Ghana, through the collaboration of various stakeholders, was able to have a constitution. We've been able to sustain this, as I said, for 31 years. So something to be proud of is a marker of our stability. It's a national power, the way we are perceived internationally and then also nationally. So we should be conscious of that. We have a very good parliament. I was, when I was a minister, for me, the security safety was parliament. Anytime we have security challenges, I was very proud to go, for instance, to the uh, Defense and Interior Subcommittee, able to be able to solicit their wisdom. So parliament has been where sensible com compromises have been reached over the period, whenever we had national challenges. But you wouldn't say that the parliament we had at the time you were minister is the same parliament we have now? The same parliament. We have a very strong parliamentary tradition in this country. And they are able to, able to reach consensus whenever the nation is in crisis. This, that is where we have run to in security terms whenever there was trouble. At this stage, there doesn't so seem to be I a consensus. I have been very nervous about the developments, and I'm very confident that if we allow parliament to examine this issue, they will be able to reach a consensus. And there is no better parliamentarian in terms of consensus than uh, the Speaker Babin. He has been able to sustain parliament during periods of crisis. And we have other parliamentarians, uh, uh, very solid. So if we allow parliament the opportunity to explore, explore the current issues, they will be sensible enough to resolve this issue. So let's be capable, uh, let's try and reflect on our tradition. And as you said, 
This is a very difficult period. We just before elections. There's a lot of government business that needs to be done. So we must be conscious. And also around us in West Africa, we have challenges. There's a hell. So the security services are having a look at the developments around us. So it's a very difficult period. And also, we must be aware of the fact that this is a very troublesome election. And that should be the national focus. Do we want to weaken the foundations of state? And what are the foundations? The judiciary, the, uh, the executive, and parliament. These are the foundations of our democracy. And we don't want to taint either parliament or the judiciary. Do I hear you say when you say we want to weaken, do I understand that I mean, you think what is happening uh, is weakening generally our in among the, uh, the political uh, uh, behavior? Whatever is happening, we must be able to promote the integrity of parliament, integrity of the judiciary, and the integrity of the executive. How do we do so? You are former national security Well, minister. this is where a, an issue like this can drag everybody into the mud. Now, you look at what happened on the floor of parliament. We don't want to see that. You are tainting parliament, the dignity of parliament. Look at the chief justice being dragged into this decision. I don't say he's right or wrong. I'm not here to inquire into the, the procedures. But you are a national security but minister. I'm you should be able that, to have an yes, idea. Yes, I deal who with is the situation right. as and when they arrive. But I don't inquire necessarily into the logic of what has happened. But when it has stand? happened, it has happened. Where do you stand? I stand in the resolution of conflict. Because the, the, pro, the, 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 the argument of others is that we've had a number of cases before the Supreme Court. And sometimes people are asking for expedite processes and, and rulings. And you have uh, the Speaker of Parliament declaring that the seats are vacant. In less than 24 hours, another arm of government judiciary comes in to say, stay this ruling until we have ruled on the matter. You don't have a stance on this? Well, on yeah, this? I'm looking at the political cases, or quasi-political cases. This is a political case. This could be divisive. And that is why we should be cautious about the way we deal with what is happening. Because we are dealing with government business at a very critical period of our history. But is it all about government business or it's also about really like uh, Dr. Ishmael Yamsin said, about the interests of Ghana? It's about the interests of Ghana and that is why it is very important. There must be no winners or losers. What is happening now, I think, in security practice, we go behind closed doors to find out where this case is leading us. Because if there is, if, for instance, the security services, military, police, are dragged into the floor of parliament, you can imagine the crisis. Is that, that what you through. foresee happening? Well, what I'm saying is that we hope it doesn't. But if it happens, you are, at this, you are going to taint you see, a lot of institutions are going to be tainted, and we don't want it. These are the foundations of democracy. I want to ask you one more, and then I'll come to Gary. You said if we allow parliament. I just wanted clarity on that. Are you saying that the Supreme Court should just stay off and allow parliament to go about see, its all business? All stakeholders in the country must come together to ensure that this process is contained. Where all stakeholders mean which stakeholders? Stakeholders, anybody, all the uh, stakeholders and those who can come on board to try and bring a bit of calm and wisdom into the process. It's just beginning, but it could go out of control. Ms. Anwakwa, I wanted to come to you, and it's a point that Dr. Ishmael Yamsi made earlier, that this whole writ we are talking about is even ex party, and the argument is that what is the rush? No, the writ Parliament... is not ex party. Okay, but it the was... Writ, see, if you, let, it me, was... let me explain for your audience to understand. The writ is not ex party. The writ was issued on notice. The injunction was issued on notice to hold the process all on notice. It is the application to stay the proceedings.
That was when ex party. Yes, that's what I'm talking yeah, so about. So you can't so say that it was ex party. Yes, so ex party. <laughs> so let me explain. Just, I, yes. I'm not done with my question. Okay. Yet. The application ex party, and the argument is that what is the rush? Because I'm sure you remember very well. That case between uh, Equam versus Pianim when, you know, uh, Rosemary wanted to uh, prevent Pianim from contesting. And the Supreme Court eventually said, you can't use ex party. MPP has to be served. And other people are arguing that we seem to be having a similar situation. I, I There's no think, rush. I don't think you can compare Equam and PNE to a serious governance issue like this particular one. It's a serious governance issue. And a matter where a parliament is being used... Uh, speaker is using the parliament to reconfigure parliament. And a majority, right? please, please, a majority is now being made a minority, a minority is now being made a majority through reconf reconfiguring. And you think is the speaker this, this, doing this, it? it? Of course. But your own if the speaker, If the speaker, uh -huh. wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, you are just interrupting me too much. If the speaker has stayed her, his hands off, I've been served with a rate of summons and an injunction application, and I said, okay, you filed an application even to restrain me. And I've been served, duly been served. Look, it's a letter here where the speaker made the process to return back to, back, to the, back to the judiciary. And you think that that is right? Mr. That you have, have, wait, wait, wait. Having been served with the process of court, you now ask your, your, your deputy clerk, Ebenezer Jeto, to return the process back, back, to, back, to, back to, 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 to the court. And then you to give, give a ruling on the matter. That's not a practice of procedure. The president pushes you. Once you are served with the injunction, saying to the children for doing something, you want to stay in your hands. That is how we do. We practice law. We stay in your hands. And I let the Supreme Court abide by whatever the Supreme Court will come out with. But you don't do that. You proceed to make the, 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 the what do you call it, orders on the verdict that they are complaining about. That's, that is wrong. So let me come in here. Article 18 of, um, not Article 18, Order 18 of the, one of the standing orders of Parliament yes. allows the Speaker to implement some of these things within its own jurisdiction. Again, the speaker was looking at, just like Professor Michael Quinn, like I said, this is a conversation we've been having through the week. The speaker was referring to the MPP's own Article 39, which talks about when a person crosses carpet or decides to go independent. So you're accusing the speaker of using parliament to, as it were, enforce a political agenda. You, you but see, the other side of the argument see, is also that, just let me land, <laughs> before Apenyo Makin went to court, mm. the speaker had not even declared any seat vacant per Article 2 of the Constitution see, that I talked about that, as that, actuals. That is why the Supreme Court said, the Supreme Court said, there are serious legal and constitutional matters to be considered in the rich. Okay? And the, the court also said, there are real questions of constitutional interpretation and application of the, of the fundamental rights. The people that you are saying that you are not representing in parliament, they voted for somebody. The person came to parliament. Now, when it comes to the issue of which has, uh, which has the power to, to declare that a, a provision or a constitution in terms of uh, it's vacant, it's a high court. It's a high court. The high court has the power to declare a seat vacant. But Apenyo went to Supreme Court. I am saying that when it comes to declaration of where it is vacant, it's a high court. It's a high court, not a speaker. You see, when matters of law and politics are mixed up, and somebody is alleging that, in my view, hold your hands, let's get a court to do the interpretation of the Constitution and enforcement, and then you, 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 you ignore it, even though you have been served, you ignore it, and proceed to make... The variety said, don't do it. You do the same thing. And we'll be going for And it. when you finish, when, after doing it, when you finish, you now ask your clerk to send the, the documents back to the court. We'll be, we'll, we'll be going for a break very And you shortly, think that this, this, this is proper? This argument and you're making, and I, I don't want us to go back and forth on this, because it is the same argument that we've been talking about or making since this discussion, which is on Article 97, when it was convenient for the then Professor Michael Okwe to declare the seat vacant for Formina to run independent. He went ahead and did it, but now it has come to this point, and the NPP doesn't think that this article of the Constitution is <laughs> If I may, I may respond to you in, in just one second. At the time when Michael Kwe proceeded to do what he did, was there a court case pending against him? But Apeno rushed just before was Parliament Was there a resumed. court case pending? You see, every factual situation ought to be looked at in a different context. There's a court case which has been filed 
This was filed on the 18th of, of October, 2024. Okay? And then you proceed to do what you did. You don't think that Apenyo rushing to the court, even before Why the you speaker... Say just to the a court? second. <laughs> just a second. Even before the speaker could declare the seat vacant, was another way of bending the speaker's hand into following, as it were, the constitutional or the legalities that you talk about right here? You see, you see the speaker do not have the power to do interpretation of the constitution. Somebody is alleging that something that you are going to do or something that you are, you are doing is front of the constitution. So let the Supreme Court come in to do the interpretation and enforcement. A power versus the Supreme Court alone. No other power. No other power with, 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 the, with, the, with the Speaker of Parliament. So hold on your hands, don't push, don't proceed. And then you proceed. Having proceeded, you now take the, 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 the writ, the injunction application, add a letter to it, and send it back to the court. You think this is proper to do as a Speaker of Parliament? Look, let's be fair to all the parties. Once a party has filed a case in court, just tie your hands. Tie your hands. Why, why, why is there a rush? Why was there a rush in going to make the pronouncement on the very day they said, don't do it? Why was there a rush? That's the point I'm making. What was the rush? You don't think that you're accusing the Speaker of exactly what the MPP is doing in Parliament? That is not exactly what. That, what's your question again? It's accusing him of what? I am saying that when the rate was filed with the injunction and he was served through the legal office and he became aware, and the hazard is also clear, that in fact and indeed the Speaker was aware that he has been served with the process. That is a, this is a hazard, of, this is a hazard of, the, of, the, of, the, of the proceedings, okay? That he has been served. The question is, why the rush? Why the rush? Why didn't he wait for the Supreme Court to make a rule on the matter? And he decided to do the very thing he was being... So, so, so that's, what, that's what I'm asking you. You're accusing the Speaker of rushing to go ahead when there is a court process to pay attention to. And people are asking the same question of why be, Apenio Markin because, would go because, even before the Speaker would have the see, opportunity see, to see, make any see, pronouncements. My dear Beatrice, when it comes to matters of constitutional interpretation and enforcement, it is the power of the only in the Supreme Court. And I think what they And I'll come back to you. Uh, you see, you know, it's, a, it's the Supreme Court that should do it. They've got a power that is vested in the, in, the, in the speaker to do.